this is Victor. I'm here with a new video, and this time I want to talk about a little bit the commercial strategy of Games Workshop and how Games Workshop is trying to increase the base of players to try to uh, enlarge the consumers of their products, try to sell more products, and uh, yeah, try to capture more more people. Okay. The first thing is Games Workshop have uh, diversified a lot the games. Right for a long time, they only had uh, well, in the nineties they had a lot of games, a lot of um, specialist games. Then they uh, stopped that. They had for a long time only Warhammer 40k and Warhammer Fantasy. Was very hard to go to those games. It was a big major games. And then they started introducing uh, a lot uh, of games, uh, more or less at the same time that they have launched Age of Sigmar. So we have seen. Uh, Warhammer Underworlds, Kill Team, for low miniature count. Uh, we have seen Adeptus Titanicus. Uh, we have seen some satellite games like the Speed, um, Speed Freaks. Some have been popular, some no. Uh, we also had, for example, the who was called this the the one that was based on the rules of Warhammer Second Edition, the Shadow Shadow War Armageddon. Okay, we had Shadow, we have too many shadows in in Warhammer recently. So we have Shadow War Armageddon, we have Blood Bull again, Relaunch, Necromunda. So a lot of games with a lot of different type of styles and it's a way uh, to uh, take um, players from uh, and try to move them into the uh, the games workshop, right? But these are all players that are coming from war games, that are very interested in war games, right? Uh, except Warhammer Underworlds, so I would say Warhammer Underworlds is the uh, game that is coming from uh, is more a table, uh, a board game or a card game combined with board game, but it's not really a war game, right? So this is uh, one of these games that can introduce people from the board game into the Warhammer. Uh, we also have seen, uh, I think, was called Warhammer Conquest, no Conquest, uh, the one that is the card, the card games for. Uh, H.O. Sigmar, that is also uh, trying to capture people or uh, create interest in people that is coming from the card gaming. Uh, I don't know really, Champions is called, sorry, it's Warhammer Champions or something like that. Uh, but to be fair, I'm, yeah, this was not interesting for me. And then they have launched first, they were uh, having uh, licensed games. And now they are against what you're doing and uh, rather the games, right? And they are launching games on the toys or on the board games stores. We have seen the um, Blitz, for example, and they have announced that they will launch uh, uh, some more board games during uh, in, in a short future, right? So this is a way, uh, board games is a, is a very interesting choice because this can create interest. So most likely we don't think that the board game is interesting for us, but this is not the purpose of the board games, right? The board games is a way to try to capture people from the board games uh, into the Warhammer. And of course, they have a lot of um, video games, licensed video games, that uh, is also creating interest from uh, video game players, right? So these are the strategies against Workshop. Uh, is, a, is a way how you can increase the base of your consumers, okay? So you create some satellite products that um, uh, can, uh, yeah, can create interest from other consumers to go into the, your universe or into your games. But today I was surprised with this one, this Bandai and Warhammer together, so our powers combined. And they are going to launch this super big, this is going to be done by Bandai. I guess they they, uh, they will license this to Bandai. I don't know exactly how this will work, but they will have this big marine that they have uh, designed together. Okay? So, they try to uh, you know uh, create interest on the modelism hobby, right? So so far they were attacking or they were uh, trying to enlarge uh, against the gamers. Uh, they went to the card game, they went to the video game, they went to the board game. Okay, they were uh, they went to um, different scales or different um, types of um, war games. Okay, and now they go to the collectionist. Okay, we have seen this on the with the Funkos. Okay, that's with the pop-up Funkos, uh, and now we see that with Bandai. So now they go to this collection, this game, this geek, geek um, uh, people that's a little geek, and they like this type of geek um, objects or these collections objects, 
and they can be interested on on more of these uh, action miniatures. So we have this one. I, I think was uh, it's very interesting what Games Workshop is doing. I think they never did, and really the. I'm really interested to know how this new strategy that the Workshop is following up, uh, how it will go. So far, it's going very well for them. Uh, I expect they will have a very good f uh, end of the fiscal year. So, yeah, uh, especially with the first half that was uh, um, really, really good. So this is very interesting. And then we have this one that is also interesting for me because I find them so cute. Okay, so we have, I, 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 lo I love, my favorite here maybe is the Sister of Battle, I really love this one. The one that maybe I like the less is the, the Space Marine. So I love this and this, the two ladies, and also I love this, the Eversol Assassin. Looks hilarious. Okay, but uh, this is another thing that I find very, very interesting. So you go to this Chevy that have their own market, okay, you have the Chevy Minadus. They have their own market, and now you are launching these things that uh, for some collections can be very interesting, okay, and can create interest. So uh, I'm really curious to see how this evolves. The only the only thing that is uh, is dangerous when you diversify and uh, a lot uh, your products, you have to be careful that you don't lose focus on your core products, right? And I, I so far I don't see this on. on uh, games Workshop, so they are really focused on Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar, but of course the resources and the time you have is limited, so if you start um, diluting with a, a lot of products, you can have problems of cash or resources at the long term. But so far I think it's a very interesting idea, and of course I was forgetting also the new so the Black Library was another way to introduce people, people that read. So uh, and also I think very interesting the new novels for kids. Okay, these are also not, so all these are different ways try to create um, to increase a lot the consumer base of your product. Try to um, start taking consumers from other things that can be similar or can be in the same world of your toys. So. I think Games Workshop is really testing markets. Uh, he, they went to the Funko Pops, very, um, I will say, a conservative launch, four Marines, iconic. Here, I think it's very interesting. They went all Imperial, but they look very different to each other. And uh, there are two ladies. They are, the, of course, the specimen cannot, um, um, cannot be missed. I think the Eversol is a great miniature. I think they really, I love this one and as well, the the skittery uh, ranger so yeah i think this is really interesting this is and most likely if i can put my hands on these ones uh, i'm pretty sure i will paint this lady i love this this type uh, this uh, i really like these meters oh i maybe i just bought them to have it as a decoration so because they they are so cute so this is all what i want to talk here i just want to talk about the different strategies against workshop is following uh, to try to increase the consumer base. I think they are becoming more and more uh, diversified and I think they are doing the good move. So video games, uh, they have apps, they have all type of video games. And I think uh, even though some people think that licensing Warhammer Fantasy was a big mistake and they're killing it, I don't think so. They make noise. People can get interested uh, later on. Uh, I, I think uh, all the uh, board games are a very good strategy and I, I'm not interested in most of the board games they have announced but it's, I understand I'm not the target for these board games the target is other people out of, out of this hobby that can be interested by the board game and then from there jump into Kill Team or jump into uh, Warhammer Underworld for example something is smaller and then from there you increase and then you go you get interested in your faction and you go bigger and then you go to H of Sigma. So it's a way to uh, I think in the workshop the in terms of war games they try to diversify a lot to try to get different tastes and different ways to play. I think War is also goes in that direction. It's going to be for me like a Necromunda for H of Sigma. So it's going to all the new morphing in a way. Uh, let's see how it goes but I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be something like that. 
Uh, of course, not played in Morgan if uh, it's going to be played in the new world, so this is why they didn't call it Morgan. But uh, very interesting what is coming on, and I was very curious uh, on this news news. And just to uh, round up this one, uh, we have to be to pay attention because tomorrow we start start the Warhammer Fest. And I guess we are going to expect, uh, as we can expect, some news from there. Uh, we have here the living block and you know, the life block, in a way. And let's see what is coming. So, so far we only see here some boxes. See, these are the Funko Pops. Yeah, these are the Funko. So they have a lot of Funko there. And let's see what they do. So that's all for now. Uh, just a short video to talk about that, to talk about the commercial strategy of uh, Games Workshop. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and as usual, thanks a lot for watching, and see you again later. Bye!